Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and today I'm bringing to you guys some, some interesting news in regards to Netflix's adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender, their live action Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, this is interesting especially to me being a huge, huge fan of the show. Uh, ever since I heard about the live action adaptation of Netflix, I was always worried because I was afraid that we were just going to get a repeat of the live action horror show that came out in 2010 that was directed by M. Night, by M. Night Ding Dong. It was just... It was so horrible that any time I hear the words live action and avatar in the same sentence, I cringe. And which is why when I heard about this, all I could think is why, why, why in the ever-loving fuck are you doing this? Why? Why? I mean, if you are gonna... If you if you want to like sort of reimagine, at least do it in an animated format. You don't have to do a live action. Not everything has to be live action. But anyway, with that being said, it's happening. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's just let's let's just continue. let's just move on. Um. So anyway, the news that I'm bringing to you guys today is interesting because apparently after. Months of just quiet, months of just absolutely no news regarding the show whatsoever. It seems like we finally have something. Now, this is coming to us from Epic Stream. Now, I do not know how reliable these people are, but we did get, well, we do have a bit of confirmation here, which we, we are going to, um, we're, we're going to get into. So, apparently, what the news is is that we finally have an actor who is confirmed to be in the show we finally have a confirmed cast member now this is something because again we've gone months with basically nothing other than uh the voice actress for Toph, you know coming out and saying that she had a private dinner with brian and mike the two creators of the show and apparently she uh she got a chance to sort of get a look as to what, what's going on now obviously she couldn't reveal everything because they want to keep it secret, which is understandable. But at least we know, like, again, that was something. It was better than nothing. And apparently we got the uh, the confirmation that they were going to be filming in Vancouver, which is understandable. Because a, a lot of shows film in uh, Vancouver. Um, okay, so let's get into this. After the widely re reviled, you know, you know that, uh, Netflix has decided to... Give a live action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender another go. Again, I don't know why Why you're doing this. Just, just, uh. Rumor has it that the show is set to start shooting next month. And an actor from Shyamalan's ugh, uh, Airbender uh, <laughs> reveals that he's been cast in the series. Actor George Donato has revealed that he would be playing a role in the upcoming Last Airbender series. He posts. Now, this is this is directly from This is his Twitter. This is his tw Twitter account. For everyone asking, yes, I will be playing a role in this series and will do my best to rewrite the wrong I made by playing a role in the previous shitty Last Airbender movie. In hopes of being forgiven, wish me luck, George. Now, this is telling when even your own actors come out and pretty much say that your your movie was shit, then you know your movie was shit. Uh, and this is the 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 art the artwork that we got in the uh, when when it was first announced that this was happening. Now at at the very least, this actually looks like Appa. If you remember Appa, the way he looked like in the the uh, again the horror show, it did not look like Appa. Oh God, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. If you're wondering who Denoto played, he was credited as Tea House Child, a Fire Nation kid who was asked by a disguised Zuko to tell the story of his exile. If anything, he doesn't really have anything to apologize for. It's true. I mean, he basically made a brief, like, short two-minute appearance in the show, in the in the uh, the horror show. So, uh, again, I, I don't think he really deserves any of the blame. I mean, I don't think any of the actors did. I mean, they were just cast in a really, really horrible film with horrible, horrible, horrible direction. Seeing as he was just a small kid when that film came out, I guess we should be happy that he's enthusiastic about the show. Eh. So, at first we didn't know who Denoto was playing in the show yet, but some are guessing that he could be playing the part of Freedom Fighter Jet. Yeah, see, I I saw the film. I didn't know who he was playing. Like, I, who, all I can think is, who the hell is this kid? And apparently they're confirming that, wait, so this is, this is Jet, which I, I can't see... The fact that that was Jet just proves that Shyamalan had no idea what the fuck he was doing. Anyone who watches the show knows that 
Jet was the same age. In fact, he was older than Katara, which would have made him the same age as Zuko. And yet somehow you had Zuko who was a teenager and Jet who was... Okay, <laughs> okay I'm just going to stop. The more I think about that, the, the more I get triggered. He looks like he could play the part, but then again, I'm just guessing. Uh, for now, Jet is the only one of the characters who seem to not have a chosen ethnicity. I'm sure the series wants to cast Zuko with a Japanese actor and Katara and Sokka with actors of Inuit descent. That makes sense since the, the, their, um, their people were modeled after um, you know, people of Inuit culture and the, the Fire Nation is obviously modeled after you know, the, the Japanese people and the Earth Kingdom is more like China or uh, okay, Korea. So again, that, that makes sense. And the, the Air Nation, obviously, uh, you know, modeled after the Tibetan monks. While we haven't gotten any big updates, a lot of people are excited for Netflix to adapt Airbender the right way. Hopefully, the involvement of the original creators Brian Kanetsko and Michael Dante DiMartino, we get something closer to the beloved animated series. No release date has been announced for Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender adaptation. Now, when it comes to... Let's just talk about the release date for a bit. Now, when it comes to the release date, if what they're saying is true and that they're going to, be, they're going to start shooting next month... Odds are we won't see anything until maybe like uh, 2021, which to me is weird because if you go to the uh, the Netflix, if you go to Netflix and if you search Avatar: The Last Airbender and you see the um, the card for the, um, the the thumbnail for the live action, you click on it, it, it says um, like coming in 2020, which is supposed to be this year. Which is yeah, I um, odds are that's not gonna happen because which to me is weird because they announced this all the way back in 2018 and yet. We're not going to see anything until like 2021. I mean, I guess I should be kind of happy that they're sort of taking their time with this, like making sure that it's right. But at the same time, I'm wondering if like because they take too long, people might accidentally lose interest. I mean, again, why would they hold their breath for a live action adaptation when the animated series is already there? Like they could just go back and watch it anytime they want. So, yeah. Uh, so when it comes to the release date, odds are we're not going to see um, we're not going to see anything until 2021. And since if what they're saying is true, that they're not going to start shooting until next month, which is February. So po possibly, possibly we're going to see a trailer, I'm guessing, in uh, San Diego Comic-Con or New York Comic-Con. Since that's where like a lot of these big announcements, at least when it comes to nerd culture, gets revealed. So maybe, uh, which I, by the way, I will be doing videos covering all the stuff that comes out of San Diego Comic-Con. So subscribe if you want to look forward to that. Or if you want, I highly recommend you go subscribe to Emergency Awesome's channel. Now he does coverage of... Uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, or specifically the uh, the live action um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. So go follow his channel if you if you want to um, if you want some more news when it comes to this. He also does videos covering other topics, other good topics. Again, I highly recommend you go you check out his channel and subscribe. So yeah, when it comes to um, I also want to talk about this for a little bit. When it comes to Brian and Mike being involved, listen. Just because the original creators are involved doesn't necessarily mean it's going to turn out to be good. Now, again, a perfect example is look at the, the Star Wars prequels. George Lucas was heavily involved in the Star Wars prequels. And look, I do not hate the prequels. I actually like the prequels. But the thing is, George Lucas was involved and the prequels were nowhere near the quality of... Um, they were nowhere near the quality of the original trilogy. The only one, I guess you could say, is the technology. But then again, that's a given, considering technology has obviously come a long way ever since, you know, in 19, 1977. So again, that's a given. So I don't really think it should get like that over the original trilogy, just because I think that's a natural given. But when it comes to, you know, the writing, yeah, you, you got to admit, the, the, the quality is nowhere near... Um, uh, the writing and the dialogue is nowhere near the quality of the original. I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it just... Even though, again, this is coming from someone who really likes the prequels. And someone who Revenge of the Sith is one of his favorite films of all time. I mean, that, that should tell you something. And yeah, I'll, I'll admit the prequels are nowhere near uh, the, the original trilogy any day. So yeah, just because the... Uh, the again, again, normally um, I can see why a lot of people would be happy because Brian and Mike are involved whereas in the live action adaptation they weren't really involved at all so yeah um this doesn't really fill me with any confidence again then again brian Kanetsko is involved in in um is heavily involved when it comes to the uh, the extracurricular material like the uh, the comics and uh, like the the first Korra comic was not good, guys. You, you gotta admit the first Korra comic was not good. I'm liking the second one more, 
I'm still waiting for the other release of the of part three. Which, you know, if you want, uh, let me know in the video, let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a video covering the events of the comics. Because I did read all of them. If you want, like, if you don't want to go and read them, I'll do a video where I sort of summarize the, uh, the events of each comic. Uh, which, uh, just to give you guys, like, a brief summary of what happened, if you're not really all that interested in going and read them for yourself, even though I would highly recommend you go read them. So, with that being said, uh, I think, yeah, I think that's, that's everything. So, again, okay, uh... Thank you so much for watching up until this point. Again, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this news. Are you excited or are you sort of the same level of excitement as you were before? Maybe like if you were sort of, eh, you're sort of middle of the road or if your expectations were already really low um, to start with. Again, let me know all of that in the, in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, and again, like, share this video. It's really going to help this channel grow and subscribe if you want more content from me. And hit the bell icon to let you know every single time I post a new video. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I again, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And please join me on the next one. Bye.